Uh, thank you so much for your time. Quick introduction, Joey Connect, one of the senior leaders with Proteus Engage. Um, if you're wondering, we're, we're based in the Lincoln, Omaha area in Nebraska, but obviously uh, we work with clients all over the country. But uh, the goal of today's session, um, my assumption here is many of you are, are leaders that are, are doing implementation, onboarding new customers. Maybe you're in some regulated industries. Uh, it's, it's, it's tough out there. There's, there's, there's a, there's a lot going on. So we're going to kind of go through a couple of areas of this and also share, uh, some, some approaches that have worked very well. Uh, I'll be very clear. A lot of these approaches, um, obviously we're in the business of a, a platform called engage for, for onboarding, but also a lot of these things you can take as nuggets to apply, uh, to other ways that you might be doing it even manually today. So, Really look forward to sharing just what we've learned over the last five years, working with clients and, and scaling with great success. So uh, again, any questions during the session, uh, don't hesitate to pop them in there. I'll try to address them <clears throat> at, at different uh, interactions here. So I appreciate the time. Um, okay, so unlocking, obviously complex. So everybody here, this is kind of, I want you to kind of level set yourself here. Uh, or do you see these things happening? Because these are going to be the areas that I focus on. And, and there's a root cause to a lot of these things, right? Um, it's 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 not that the, they're just happening. There's kind of a big shift going on, obviously, in the world of customer onboarding and, and quite frankly, just straight up the complexity of it, right? So a lot of leaders um, are really struggling in many of these different areas. So successful handoffs, I, I, I cannot... One of the things we're preaching, and I love you to digest this and think about it within your own enterprise, but a lot of the times we're seeing onboarding and uh, other people of the implementation team joining even during the last, what I, we would call in our world, the last 25% of the sales process so that the implementation and onboarding teams are helping to qualify the deployment, especially a lot of our tech clients. They're needing to qualify the deployment even before the proposal is finalized because the cost and the investment, you know, can change. And so we're seeing onboarding literally start in the last 25% of the sale. Think about that for a minute. And if that is happening or you're like, yep, we're leaving money on the table or sales promised X and we're delivering Y or there's a rough handoff, you know, all sorts of things kind of coming about. A lot of times the root cause of that is it's because it's just been dropped on your team and the team wasn't part of the relationship development and trust, especially in any kind of longer sales cycle, um, you know, anything over three months, there's a lot of rapport and things going on there. And the second one I put it is, is kind of fulfillment and promises and expectations, right? We've all been there, uh, sales or somebody said yes or this and well sure we have an integration with D and you're like no we don't like we don't we don't have that and so managing that risk is a real big part that leaders like yourselves are concerned about um, the other one is for many of you you want more business right and you want to grow and so how do you do this in in a high engagement way and uh, in essence herd the cats and we're going to talk about that in a little bit here uh, many are also looking for a repeatable infrastructure because unless it's measured, you're not going to be able to to get better scale and and really grow. Um, so again, think about these within your own ecosystem. Um, slow time to value for for new customers. This is very interesting. So the reason why I have this on the slide, obviously, there's more challenges out there, um, but what this one's pretty important to uh, many of our clients that are technology based. Uh, so if you're a tech company, your CAC, customer acquisition cost, is going to be most of the time high if it's a high dollar amount product, 100 grand or more, 50 grand or more. Your customer acquisition cost is going to be pretty pretty north. And so what happens is, is um, even if you secure a client, a lot of you, and uh, you, you probably know this, if not, um, the company really isn't making money until year two. Uh, year two or even maybe hopefully after a cross sell, maybe there's a lost leader to get started. So this slow time to value, if the onboarding is not optimized, one, you're just going to turn the client right out the gate, really be upside down, or you're just dragging out that time to value, which obviously is really dragging down your revenue and, and your growth opportunities. And so time is a killer. And it's not just when it's being sold. Time is a killer when you're onboarding equally as much as time kills on, on a sale. And so these are really big concerns that a lot of uh, onboarding leaders, implementation leaders, talk to us about 
and challenges. So that's why I'm bringing these up here for you to kind of digest. Think about that. Analyze your own environment. I'll share some resources. Um, and at the end, I'll, I'll pull it up on how to uh, audit your onboarding experience and other resources of garbage in, garbage out with Gigo, which we'll talk about here in a minute. That's on the handoff side. So I just a lot of areas where small little things can really dramatically offset and, and create big, big problems for, for, for you and your team. So um, aligning accountability uh, is another thing, especially for growth companies or any company, but a lot of times we're hearing that, you know, they want to be able to hold their reps more accountable and also the customers more accountable and they're seeking an environment to help with that. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later because accountability is, is a key element to success. And then again, we talked about, you know, optimizing at scale. So let me kind of step back for a moment. I want you to digest these things, right? Apply them to your own, write them down. Sorry, my nose got, I got something on my nose and I keep scratching. Um, but basically think about these in, in your own environment and you might have some others, please put them in the comments and I'll, I'll take a look at them. But, and of course on our website, there's, there's a lot of examples of these things and tools and resources that you can consume that, you know, go deeper into each one of these concepts because obviously they're not just bullet points, but so let's step back for a second. These are the challenges that leaders are having, right? Um, but that old adage of Eastern and Western medicine, you know, covering up the problem or really getting to the root cause. Well, the root cause, there, there's there's a method to the madness here and why this is affecting you and your teams so much now. And it, it comes down to this. It comes down to the environment has dramatically changed. And this really, as some of you might know, uh, our product is used in complex sales, handoffs, onboarding cross-selling CS activities, many, many different use cases to our platform. But whether you're using our platform or not, um, this is really the underlying uh, challenge of that. So so let me help frame this a little bit and then think about it, right? Because email is not a an onboarding solution, um, right? And transient uh, communication is, is not an onboarding solution. And so how do you herd the cat? So let's just kind of role play for a second and again, apply this to your enterprise accordingly. But on the left-hand side of this equation is your team, right? So if you are, again, selling you know, B2B, obviously this, this webinar is about complex sales. So we're gonna make some broad assumptions here. It's, it's a B2B or a high dollar B2C sale. Um, that's gonna involve anywhere from literally five to 10 people in your organization. That's gonna be the original sales rep. That's gonna be um, a leader, a sales leader, maybe a subject matter expert, um, contracting, all, all sorts of different folks uh, to on your side of the equation, right? And then on the client side, you all know this, is that as you penetrate the account, you started that sale with just one person on the team, and then from there, you have to do all of this consensus decision-making, and there's a big decision-making team on that side, 10 to 15. Many of our regulated industries, like we have many clients who are selling into healthcare and finance and you know all sorts of stuff, they have 20 people plus uh, on the actual onboarding side, right? And so the numbers just start to get very, very substantial. And so in order to, to attack this problem, you know, email instant failure. Google Doc, instant failure. Excel spreadsheet, instant failure. Because all of this is over time. And how do you properly communicate and collaborate with both sides of the equation, right? And this, this, this chasm, this delta, is really one of the big driving areas of where um, visibility, management, expectations, risk, all permeates is because there's a lot of people involved in this process over a period of time and how do people create visibility and optimization of their relationships during that? So it really is a multiplier game. I'm I'm 46, and it, this it wasn't this way 10, 15 years ago. Literally, not being an old timer Joe, but but literally the number of people involved in in both sides of the equation, the actual sale to handoff to onboarding to the actual consumption of the people on the right hand side is crazy, right? And that's why companies are um, reluctant to onboard new platforms if they feel like there's gonna be a lot of risk and disruption. So having a really strong onboarding process is really critical to your organization's success because it's the 
It's the first opportunity they're working with you, the bulk of the team, and then also their judgment of how organized and optimal your group is going to be with them moving forward is heavily judged on those, you know, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. That's real. That's real in onboarding. That's real in industry, right? Especially if you have a cross-sell, upsell methodology that most of your revenue is coming later, yeah, it's even more critical, right? So again, stepping back, it's an environmental challenge, right? And so you've done good selling. Now you got this awkward scoping issue. If, if you have some PS or wrapped around that, that's another thing I didn't even talk about. Many of our clients have not only a product or a service they're offering, they also in that service might have professional services that are being layered over that. So that's a whole nother team, right? You got the product people, you got professional services people. I think I'm beating this to the ground enough. <laughs> Thanks, that's funny. Um, like, um, you know, the, you, you get it. It's, it's camp run amok, right? And so this environment then permeates a lot of the problems that we just talked about if you don't wrap your hands around that. And for many people, the current way they're doing that is through email and, and you know, loose, loosely organized uh, materials and information and, and no way to consistently get visibility, measure that, et cetera. So takeaways for you, no matter what, think about this to your environment and see how you can kind of bring this all together to life. I, I put there the need continuous and connected experiences. It, it truly is that. Um, when you're onboarding, it's it's pretty intense. It, it's continuous for X number of, you know, 30 days to onboard, whatever it might be. Obviously, for a lot of partners, there's the initial onboarding, maybe some testing and, and things of that nature, you know, alpha testing, and then scaling it out. And then the first 120 days are really risky post live. So there's lots of different areas here. But one of the key underlying drivers is the environment. So with our experience and obviously repeatedly proving this, over our clients and seeing massive results, I kind of summarize this in, in kind of three distinct uh, elements to help drive this forward. And again, these are things for you to think about related to your own organization. And I'll point you to different resources that you can consume and obviously reconstruct uh, um, at, at, at your leisure. Uh, so, so again, the environment here. So for us, it really comes down to kind of three key pieces. Uh, that you can, again, analyze as you're auditing your environment and looking for a way to optimize that moving forward. The first is people, right? Um, so we kind of alluded to this, the old proverbial herding cats, getting everybody together. Um, very, very critical um, that all of that is is organized. And do you have an environment where you can create visibility where all of these people can be seeing information? Passing back, passing back and forth a SharePoint document, not going to do it. Uh, pass back to Google Doc, right? Like it just doesn't work because there's so many stakeholders. You need to be providing updates. People are missing meetings. Quite frankly, in some clients where their deployment is a year, people are churning, right? Like people are leaving their jobs. There's new people coming in, very transient, right? And so this also applies to on your side, if you're hiring a lot of new onboarding people in your team, you want to plug and play them into a consistent environment so that they look like an A player, even though they just started. Well, how you do that is you kind of organize all these people, and then you can share information, resources, all sorts of things based on who they are and all these elements. So again, one of the big things you need to think about is getting everything centralized so you have visibility on all the players and all the information and can create a repeatable environment in that because the sheer number of people is a very, very big problem, um, you know, with this. And like I said, we have clients in regulated industries. It's always way more people. Um, you also have, remember when you're onboarding, there's also you originally, your sales team has probably originally sold this potentially to C-suite individuals within the company, vice presidents, directors, COOs, right? Those kind of folks. But a lot of times those people are not actually involved in the actual onboarding. They're bringing in their team, again, more people on the right-hand side here, but you still want to keep those individuals up to date because they've just signed a contract with you for 150, 2 million, whatever it is. Uh, you want to keep them integrated into the progress, the expectations, everything there. So you have a couple of different um, communication styles and or stakeholders within that. It's not just purely the onboarding folks. So again, step back on your side, map out kind of who are the players typically in your onboarding experiences. And again, don't forget, typically for great success, we're seeing that might need to be drug into 
the sales side a little bit. Okay. Um, so that last 20%, 15%, whatever you want to kind of, yeah, everybody's product services are different. It's not one size fits all, right? But just think about that. Are there ways you can improve the overall outcomes by maybe being a little bit closer to the tip of the spear? Okay. So the first is people. We talked about that at the top. You can see people, then you got your data, and then you got to wrap that around process. So that's why I broke these out for you. So you can kind of think about, okay, who are the people involved? Okay. What is the data we're moving back and forth and all the needs and wants around that? Okay. And then how do we package that up uh, for success? And of course, by doing that, over time, you're going to get, you know, incremental feedback there. All right. Um, okay. Makes sense. Any questions around that? Again, don't hesitate. Pop them into the, to the thing. Many of you giving me smiley faces. Yeah. Thumbs up. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is just the brutal real world we, we have going on here. All right. So we're going to progress here forward. So you got your people, you understand that it's, uh, you know, matrix based organizations. You're trying to de silo individuals to make sure there's all visibility, et cetera, et cetera. You, you got it. All right. So the next one is basically information. And so, um, what you're going to see here, and of course, this says produce engage our product on this side, but one of the considerations you need to think is how are you going to seamlessly work this into the ecosystem of your group? Because you want to limit how much behavioral change you're going to have to have your teams do in order to be successful. Plus, how do you create visibility onto a lot of the data that's being captured during the onboarding experiences? And let me park here for a second and just kind of you know bring this to life for you guys. So many of our clients, um, and I'm sure yourselves, in order to successfully onboard the customer, you're needing to pass back and forth tons of documents, file sharing. You might want them to fill out questionnaires for configuration. You might want them to fill out Excel spreadsheets that are going to be imported into your tool, right? All sorts of things, user account uh, onboarding or uh, scope of work documents, contracting, right? So, so start to identify what are the elements that you're needing to effectively go back and forth with your customer. And then it's not only getting data, the, the I mentioned it earlier, it's it's garbage in, garbage out, which we call GIGO. And so even if you get to this stage, sometimes the data you're getting is just garbage and that's gonna slow everything down. So you, you gotta remember, you know more than your customer knows about your product. So you can't make any assumptions during or your service during the onboarding experience. You gotta lay out real clear expectations, provide them maybe really smart templates or forms, like I mentioned, all these kinds of things wrapped up into the environment, again, to best guide them to success. So many times it's it's uh, not well thought through um, of, uh, you know, wow, if we just send them random things and they get us random things back, how much more time that adds and delays and frustrations and all sorts of things. I'll put another note um, at the bottom of this. We have a great insight on uh, garbage in, garbage out that I, I really recommend because just that audit of yourself of what really you need back and forth and are those correct where let's say your client I'm making this up, it integrates with an ERP. And so it's Oracle or whatever. You might have different questions and data needs collected there, or it's integrated to Salesforce, different data and information there. So how do you create kind of these templates and processes around not only asking the client for the data in an efficient way and teeing them up for success, but then when they get it back to you, you know, the old trust, but verify, because I'm sure you guys have all been there as the client sent you something, nobody looked at it, just sat in everybody's email. And then the day you need it, you realize it's junk and that person's now on vacay for 10 days. Yep. Everybody's been there. Not against vacations, but that's the trust, but verify, right? And so you can see how each one of these things starts to create frustration, elongation of the actual onboarding experience. And again, just leveling your team up for obviously we know what we're doing and creating that consistency that is needed. And so that's one piece. It's it's getting the data and all of that. But then there's a tremendous amount of two-way collaboration on things. And so that's where a lot of groups miss the ball too, is it's not just one-time volley. It's a collaborative experience to work through iterations on things. And then also making sure it's seamlessly integrated into your environment. Because again, you want to reduce the number of steps um, internally to, to make these things come to life. So as you're looking at your own onboarding experience, especially in complex, look at your templates, look at the expectations of the customers, look at how you're, you're providing an environment for them to effectively communicate and collaborate with you guys 
in between the meetings. Too many clients rely on the meetings to actually do the onboarding where great onboarding happens in between meetings. And, and for many organizations, that, that's a jump for them because they always want to be in front of the customer, but you cannot ask for 98 meetings with the customer, right? And so you got to create an environment where they can communicate and collaborate with you, ask questions, do all sorts of things. You're setting the expectation correctly. There's an environment to do this, but then also making it really easy on your team side to be able to access the data, get to it, share it, provide feedback, those types of things. So you're definitely going to want to look at, you know, integrations to optimize that every, you know, we obviously, as Engage, we have integrations with Salesforce, HubSpot, all your email, messenger tools, all the things to create that connected experience on our end. But wherever you're at in your journey, just make sure you're thinking through that because it's a critical piece of, of it, right? We talked about the people. You got a lot of them. Then you got a lot of information going back and forth and people got to get to it and do stuff with it and, and all sorts of things, right? And then ultimately, you, you know where I'm going here, you want to then wrap that in some sort of repeatable manner, right? So again, in complex offerings and complex expectations, um, you want to own the conversation of the onboarding, meaning your team. And so again, your new customer doesn't know what they don't know. They have no idea what's coming. So being able to provide them a clear roadmap, clear expectations, an environment of accountability to keep things on schedule and a way that when they do stuff, you respond, and also your fact-checking stuff so that if there are challenges, you're immediately keeping them and making them look like rock stars, right? That's the whole key. Maybe I shouldn't say that rock star thing. If you see those commercials for, uh, what is it? What is that? What? What is that? Yeah, that's one of, one of those. If you if you know, say it in the chat. Uh, but one of those uh, ERP programs, That's there. there's that whole joke about rock stars. Um, Workday, thank you. <laughs> um, so, so. But you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. Like that's the whole ecosystem uh, around this. So there's got to be a good, concise way of moving information. And then the last piece, again, so you got your people, you got to really get your templates, your processes laid out. Again, you might bifurcate that process based on what modules you're selling or services you're selling or based on the client's environment. Those are the initial questions. And then of course, you're going to build out a couple of little journey paths, right? All of these things come into play, but you only can do that once you get that good intel and hopefully that was done you know towards the end of the sales process right that last again 20 percent etc there so then in process side of it and i'm not getting into like builders and workflows and all that stuff of course our platform has those types of things but but really trying to keep it a high level for consumption purposes and i'm going to point you to resources and tools that you can do additional auditing but kind of thematically um these are the things that you're that every typically growth leader is looking for for your onboarding team, right? You have the environment, right? Complex environment, many people both sides. Now you got your people identified. Now you got your onboarding process somewhat documented, somewhat figured out of what you have to collect. Then how do you wrap that around with a great experience, right? Because again, it's not about just punching out emails, right? It's leveling up the customers you know, expectations on, on where things are at, how things are going and meeting them where they want to be met all the time, right? An old adage I, I always say to everybody is, right now you can go spend $12 at Domino's and you can actually watch that pie being made the entire time and you know when it's 50 feet from your building. And that's on a $12 purchase. Now you're gonna chuckle, many of you are selling stuff more than 50 grand and a lot of times your customer has no idea what's going on. How is that acceptable, right? How did it become that way, right? Um, it's because of the environment, right? And all the different stakeholders and all the different things. So you need to create that centralized environment. So again, centralized environment, now you have an ecosystem to be able to communicate, collaborate, and repeat processes so that your team, and I'll talk about this a little bit more, over time can continuously improve, right? So a lot of times there's paralysis for perfection. And even in clients we've, our current clients of ours, um, they, they're like, Joe, we don't want to get started until we have everything figured out. The problem is, is in onboarding, it's, it's living and breathing. It's never figured out. It's continuous, especially as you add new features, products, services, everything you're doing. It's a live experience. It's a li living journey. It's always evolving. But can, but underneath that, 
there are kind of core principles, right? You, you don't want it to be transactional. You want it to be continuous because it's a relationship. And so that's where a lot of times having that environment is, 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 is very, very important. An environment for accountability. So there's some fear out there that you can't ask customers to do things or, you know, stuff. And, and that's, that's false. Um, actually, customers, when they're being onboarded, want to be provided a clear path for success. Um, and that's where, uh, like in our tool, we have checklist systems and tasks and other um, experiential based uh, collaborative kind of tools to guide those customers based on expectations, timing, follow ups, keeping everybody on the same page. You need to have an environment of accountability. Now, sometimes if you have newer team members, um, you know, or, or younger team members, junior team members, they're not as confident making demands for stuff. And so those are the things you got to kind of figure out. And then what are your must haves and what are nice to haves in that accountability thing? We help a lot of our partners with that. Um, and it really changes the trajectory of expectations, growth, timing, of course, reporting, <laughs> analytics, right? All those things then become what's not measured is, is junk, right? There you go. Um, the other one is repeatable and scalable. So you, as you're looking at things and creating your resources and your materials and stuff, you want to look at how we can be doing this for scale. And that scale obviously is, is very, very important. As I just talked about hiring new people, you can plug them into repeatable processes, right? Um, everything is about kind of harmonizing that experience to, to do that. Tools to drive engagement and communication, again, this is what we we're talking about. You got to bring everything under one roof so that there's visibility stuff, whether that's commenting or the documents or you know checklists or whatever it might be. You want to drive that into an ecosystem that is completely measurable. And in a lot of our cases, clients want to push that back to their CRM. Again, depending where you're at in your journey, you, if you don't have a CRM, you know, just think about these things on how you can do that. Very simple little things can create big, big, big returns uh, for you. Okay. Um, for some of you who are looking at a more sophisticated or kind of next leveling up stuff, it's that connected and smart experience like we have intelligent automations, AI, other things that you can start to use your data because it is centralized and everybody's involved. You can start to use that data to do more advanced uh, targeting based on personas, based on use cases, like all sorts of things can then be unlocked. But again, respect your journey, respect where you're at and understand that don't worry about that now. Let's just incrementally start to get our team uh, optimized. And analytics, of course, for you, for processes, as a leader, these are all the things you should be looking for because that's going to be the difference of, um, you know, uh, onboarding plans are like business plans. A lot of them are on shelves and they're never brought to life. Uh, there's actually a great resource we have about that. Just because your process is documented doesn't mean it's being done. Right. And that's another thing that for another webinar, I think we have one coming out soon related to that, which is just because it's documented doesn't mean it is. And and that's a, a big Jahari window for a lot of leaders, um, you know, who are well, we, it's that's part of our process, but there's no way to actually audit the process or see the process or measure the process. And quite frankly, if you have more than two onboarders working on stuff, the chances that they're actually following that without an environment or an ecosystem to do that is Slim to none, and it's nothing against them, right? Just all being honest here, right? So I appreciate it. All right, so goals of this. So so you might be saying, okay, Joe, I get it. Like problem environment, I see that there are three distinct pieces of that that I need to take into consideration. And you might be wondering, well, how is that gonna, how is that gonna benefit our our org, right? Well, I'm just sharing with you. These are uh, these are a lot of our numbers that our clients see. Um, but again, depending on where you're at in your journey, and again, in a complex ecosystem, a complex onboarding, all right, um, these are things we, we see um, relatively quickly in, in, in that journey. So one is just full-blown operational benefits, you know, 25% plus of scale, meaning team members can do more or you, you can have less hires, those types of things, because they truly become repeatable. Engagement around thirty percent plus improvement in engagement, and you got to understand it's 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 a different world, 
um, especially with certain different types of stakeholders on the onboarding experience. Um, some people will be in the platform heavily during the day, others at night, off hours, weekends. Um, and that engagement, you you know, you want to meet them where they want to be met. I don't have to ask all of you who are on here today. All of you have Netflix or Apple TV. And, and the reason why is you want to consume information on demand. Again, why wouldn't your new customer want to check in on, on what's going on, just like that Domino's pizza? So providing that centralized environment of updates, recaps, progresses, things that are open, follow-ups, right? All these things that are needed to make sure your group looks its best and the customer is happy. You want to kind of think again through all those little pieces. Start simple and then get more. Um, visibility, I, I think this is a no-brainer. This is kind of one of those things that, um, uh, how do I, basically, it's a big, big difference when you can start to see what's going on, right? Besides just having milestones and in your team meeting saying on track, off track, uh, this by having your processes in place and a lot of the things we've talked about already today really unpacks a lot of visibility for you for capacity management, expectation, excuse me, expectations on customers, expectations on your team, bottlenecks right? Like, why is everything getting stuck here? Or why is this phase taking longer than others? Um, that switches from hunches to to facts. And and so as you think through your process, that's something you, you want to think about. Again, for us, we have a tremendous amount of intelligence checklists and tasks and all sorts of libraries of things to help optimize the, the client journey, obviously, or the customer onboarding journey. Um, and that, again, is intelligent. It builds over time as you continue to do it. So you can start simple and then eventually uh, scale out. And for every client, that's typically the best because you're going to get these other benefits immediately, right? Like that's a huge benefit. Think about for your team, that's one out of four, right? That's a free rep out of every four at the top there, right? 25%, right? That, that's a huge thing in your budgets. And then you as an implementation leader, what you want to be able to do is fight for budget within your company and you want to be able to demonstrate why or based on capacity planning, this is what I need, right? And so it's it's no more hunches, it's, it's deployment plans and growth plans and everything with proven data and interactions and how that ties to optimize revenue for the group. And so for a lot of our leaders, that's a big piece when they're a growth company and they have a two, two, two member team now or a five member team now, but in their head, they're like, I need to be at 15 to 35 implementation and onboarders now. How do I build that business case to my own company that I need to start hiring people or I need failover and doing that? And how for every single time I do that, we're getting strong ROI on that. That's what we're talking about on the screen here. Again, whether you're us or not, these are things that you can use to help kind of grow, obviously, your business model. We've talked about it a little bit, but training and consistency. So by optimizing your, your environment, like I described here, that's going to allow juniors to look like senior reps, and that's going to allow them to be more effective, handle more accounts, right? The 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 benefits get pretty extensive here. Even if you have a two-person team, I think you can figure out the math very quickly for your own business case. Um, so it's it's important. And then time to value for customers. Um I did see it. That should be customers with a capital C. Yeah, thanks. Um, but uh, time to value for customers. Ultimately, that, that's why we're here, right? We're, we're here to provide value to them because people who see value buy more. Um, and so ultimately, we can't lose sight of that. Even though we're here to get them on, we want to try to do that in the, in the fastest, um, uh, effective way humanly possible to do that. And oh, by the way, that makes you guys more money. And, and that's usually important to implementation teams. Uh, many of our implementation teams are CS teams. Everybody has different names for these things. Sometimes onboarding is CS, you guys all know, CS implementation. But we see uh, a heavy trend of um, incentives uh, being kicked in uh, for delivery ahead of schedule, on schedule, over schedule um, uh, departments being managed against that because it's so critical to the satisfaction of the customer and, and the expectations there, right? So, so again, 30,000 foot, you got an environmental problem. Fundamentally, it, it's really focused around three distinct areas, the people, the information that you're going back and forth on, right? And then wrapping those into consistent, easy to digest processes, right? 
And then these are the benefits, you know, of that. So I alluded to it a couple of times already. It's, it's, it's be gracious to yourself. You already are onboarding clients, unless you're like a really, 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 really new startup and you're onboarding client one, that's fine. You can download a resource and be, be on your way. Um, but what it really comes down to is addressing your bleeding points based on everything we were just talking about and incrementally building it out over a period of time. A lot of our customers uh, to get to the full run rate of like full automation and all sorts of crazy, fun, impactful, meaningful things can take anywhere from six months to a year because we start simple. We might, you know, benchmark or, and prototype against a couple of things and then prescribe that recipe. We frequently call it a recipe. Um, prescribe that recipe out continuously uh, after that. And so these are just, whether you use four phases, 80 phases, I don't give a crap. The point is, is set the expectations of your team correctly. Don't try to be perfection out the gate and communicate as a change manager, as a leader, um, communicate your goals in a clear way to your team so that they're not overwhelmed. And it's about incremental progress. And we're going to get better every single onboarding, every single time we onboard a new client. But when you can put that into a centralized environment, measure it, get better, they're going to see the benefits of doing that. And you're ultimately going to move the needle for your entire team and quite frankly, get the buy-in you need as a leader to win. Okay. And so that's a real critical part of this process is the communication and the um, getting your team members to align with this process. Because many of you probably have, if, you're, if your company's been around a little bit, you got junior people, you got OGs, original gangsters that have been onboarding clients for a long time and they got their way of how they do it and all this is the same everybody knows the same thing with sales right like oh bobby does it this way or tiffany does it that way everybody's got their story right but incrementally for you as a leader and for the success of the organization and for scaling and all the other benefits from two slides ago in order to do that you need your own team's buy-in and so how you can do that is, is it's not a full swoop do everything in day one it's over the next 18 months, team, this is what we want to get to, and here's why. So the communication of that, like this, and the, these phases or other phases, you can grab res other resources on our, our site, but a lot of it is just the communication strata around setting the expectations, ultimately making the clients more effective, all right? So just to summarize again, this this webinar is, is really around just these high-level concepts and things. We'll be breaking these out, obviously, in more depth, but I do have, we have, not me, we do, uh, we have a lot of resources kind of related to this that that I wanted to share. And then for some of you, I um, multiple people have asked me to just can maybe show our product here a, a little bit um, just to bring it to life for some folks. So I'll do that. But if you want to skip out now, please do, because I'm going to go to our resource center and then I'm going to go obviously uh, show a couple just things of our platform just to wet the whistle. And again, would we like you as a client? Of course. But there are so many companies that are in different phases of their journey. We work with many small companies. We work with many enterprise companies. Wherever it fits, love to have an additional conversation and unpack these things more with you, for you, whether it's just, hey, we have this idea and you never become a customer. Hey, that you know, it's a long life. Who knows, right? Um, but ultimately, I think you guys know, uh, we'd love to obviously have customers. But I feel like sharing... A lot of these challenges and what to look at in your own enterprise uh, is is really, really important in this journey. So with that said, let me kind of show you. I think the screen is, is still being shared. Yep. Um, so if you go out to our, this is our corporate site. Many of you obviously have been there because you signed up for this. And maybe you've been to some of these resources. But I, I would really pay attention in this resources area. Um um, we have this templates um, and just information related to a lot of the elements that I was talking about today. Of course, we also have, those are actually downloadables and other things. And then we also have quite a big uh, thing of insights. I mentioned this, the garbage in, garbage out earlier. Um, we actually do a lot of stuff in hospitals and fintech. Uh, so there's there's some intricacies or unique things uh, related to them. We, we work with a ton of nonprofits. So we have different engagement uh, onboarding for 
nonprofit ecosystem. But I, a lot of these, uh, here's our audit uh, of helping you kind of unpack that. I encourage you to consume these. They're they're great cheater things that for your own internal meetings and as you're working on stuff, they're simple to consume. The, the approach and strategy is very similar to how I'm talking to you guys here today. We're very, one of our values in our company is candid. So we're always openly dialoguing and, and really not trying to sell anything. We just have learned a lot, have seen a lot of the problems. Obviously we have a great solution to solve those, but everybody's at a different part uh, in their journey. So I encourage you to, to download these resources. I'll link these resources obviously, or, or quick links to, to, to here so that it's, it's real effective for you to, you know, be able to get uh, the information and continue your, 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 your journey map. Um, all right. With that said, appreciate a lot of everybody's time. Of course, we'll be sharing out the deck and, and anything else that, that, that you might be needing quite a bit of the homework assignments I talked about linked to the resources here. Um, many of you, um, have asked, Hey, can you just, you know, for three minutes or so, just share a little bit about engaged. So I'm going to shift to that now. Obviously I encourage anybody to, to, to stay on, uh, accordingly, but let me, um, so this, this is our platform. Um, so going to have to shift modes here a little bit into kind of explaining platform. So you understand all the problems, right? We just went through uh, a lot of the challenges. So, so obviously we have a solution to that, right? That's how we know what we're doing and, and how we've created a lot of success for clients. So this is what we call a workspace environment. This is actually client facing. How this is created is typically automatic off of your CRM, Salesforce, or HubSpot, and you also can just do it manually. Um, or it, there's still a lot of automation, but manually. And what this creates is a a centralized ecosystem for you and one client, one client that you're onboarding. Again, a very popular use case, as you might guess based on the presentation earlier, is that a lot of companies use us for the last part of their sales process, their demo, there's meetings, contracting, the definition of scope, et cetera, and then the handoff and then all the way through to onboarding. So this environment here is a client facing workspace secure where these people here would be your new customer. And then these people down here, of course, would be members of your team. More people can come in and out throughout, throughout the entire journey, but everything is done in a centralized secure environment for all of the data collection, communication, commenting, document sharing, everything within what we call a workspace ecosystem. These can either be accessed through a link or the customer logs in like an extra net, a secure, secure portal for them. I alluded to a lot of the things already in the in the, the other part, but we do a tremendous amount of document sharing and collaboration all through the tool, back and forth, obviously, templates. Integration with your team's calendars for meetings and stuff. This is very popular because it, again, herds the cats. This is an example of a sales mutual plan. I'm going to jump forward here a little bit into some of the onboarding phases of this. But as, as you might imagine, this uh, we have a template library and all sorts of things behind this and, and how, to, how to do this overall. And then each one of these checklist items can have different tasks. It has videos or content inside them, all sorts of things to help guide that customer through the onboarding process, plus a ton of automations for follow-up, escalation, reporting, all sorts of things, obviously, in here to do this. And we have many, many, many other module types as I alluded to, um, a lot of our clients, any of your marketing materials, of course, can be shared uh, with clients. Uh, we talked about for onboarding, a lot of discovery questionnaires. This is very popular where you're able to collect uh, repeatable information from customers. And then based on how they answer this, different uh, checklist items or other things are automatically loaded to the workspace. So there's a tremendous amount of intelligence here. This also it can be based on the client type, like if you're selling into hospitals different than banks, different than a manufacturing, uh, obviously these experiences can be catered to each one of those accordingly also. Again, that comes back to that efficiency, quality of delivery, setting the right expectations, et cetera. So there are libraries um, and templates all but in here to make it very, very fast for your team to, to engage with these and, and obviously um, deploy and manage. And again, this is, Seamless with your email, seamless with Slack and Teams. Uh, so if a if a if a customer comments here, immediately the the rep Slack channel lights up. They can answer back in Slack, and it will go through the tool and right back out to the customer. So creating that connected experience is very very critical, um, you know, in the, in the overall process. And like I said, each one of these checklist items, depending on you, know, some clients have twenty different kind of checklists. Some clients only have a few checklists, but within each checklist item. 
Um, there's a there's a guy you know. Um, each checklist item allows you to have instructions, video downloads, relate them to other modules that are in the tool. Again, bringing everything to light, but ultimately accountable for delivery of when it's supposed to be delivered, completed, obviously quality of work, auditing it all. All of that happens within the ecosystem uh, of the product. And so obviously, um, this is obviously just a high level demo. Um, but if any of you want to you know, explore more, love to have a conversation and mind map your environment to how our, our system and, and everything uh, drives that forward. And then on the back side of the equation, you have, um, excuse me, me. On the back side here, this is that demo side we were just looking at. Um, this is again for your rep side now. Uh, you have all of the analytics and everything to understand what's going on with every single account. And then of course, any of the rolled up based on team members, all sorts of operational reporting. And, and again, if you're using a CRM, this is all being piped back also for voice of customer and uh, system of record within your ecosystem. So, um, but this is how we help solve all of those problems that I believe you're having, especially many of our clients are for complex ecosystems. Um, and of course, all the benefits I shared and ROI, um, again, we can start simple and then scale it out accordingly. So I appreciate everybody's time today. Um, as a recap, Joey Connect, um, obviously we have a great team. So if you're interested in learning more, please apply on the uh, on the website. Just sign up for a one-to-one a -one demo or a group demo. Um, uh, for everybody who signed up here today, we'll send out a video of this in case you didn't make it. Um, and obviously, please check out our resources. That's Those are really actionable turnkey elements that you can use today to really optimize uh, your complex um, onboarding environment. So again, appreciate it. Uh, thanks for everybody today. Um, and I'll, I'll answer some of these questions offline because I can then do one-to-one -one on some of these, but I, I appreciate it. And, and again, thanks for the time today.